y'all appreciate y'all what it do what it do what is today today is wednesday it is wednesday right it's hump day out here need dog gonna the weather the what the weather's kind of cool today the weather's kind of cool today out here in florida florida my state stay in your ground state but you go home state please don't run up we in fifth high life state around here in these street it is oh i am willie williams appreciate y'all for joining me this is the willie williams show the midday news show we also streaming live on twitch twitch.tv.com the willie William show gone round now gone round there we're trying to get our numbers up over there on twitch we're trying to uh dog it we is at 115 followers we need more followers we tried to at least do five followers five follower increments weekly this is what we're trying to do um hold on hold on hold on let me look Damn it, we still at 115. We still at 115. I need to support right here in the street. If you do not have a Twitch, please go around there and create a Twitch so you know we can get things popping around here in these streets on Twitch. What it do, what it do. Hold on, hold on. That dog it. Um, is it me? Is it me or does it be seeming like yeah, nah, no. does it be seeming like you could have just made a payment to um to Netflix, you see it in your email, and then you look at your email again, and you be like, another one? <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on. The months is just rolling by, and now you was double paying or triple paying, but you don't need much no. Now, I don't know if I'm double paying or triple paying because a player like me would not even take the time out to go ahead on and really, really look at when they're taking the stuff out because I don't have time, but I need to make time about my 20-something dollars that they constantly take out of a player account that's what i need to do that's what i need to do and stop complaining out here any dog on street to see if they is really taking advantage oh damn it am i a victim should i play the victim you know what i'm saying this is a dog on shame hold on hold on who, who said oh i got some reward points shout out to everybody who got reward points out here in these street let's say i got twenty-seven thousand reward point oh jesus Oh, jeez, I'm balling a little bit. Shout out to Phyllis. Shout out to Phyllis for the $1 cash. Shout out to say, hey, Miss Shirley. Say, hope everything is good. Prayers, prayers, prayers. Love you, Willie. Love you back. I appreciate that right there. Let's see what we got. I see 87. I see 87, but I know that we can do better, so I really ain't tripping um, about that right there. Say the 510, Oakland, California is checking on in for duty. What it do, what it do. Say I made the second like. I appreciate that right there. Salute Detroit up in the building. Come on in, y'all. North Carolina is up in the house. Mm. Shot time to check it on in for that five say let go on yeah 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 we coming right on around right there to Chicago show sure enough ear cause they have been doing things that um it's unspeakable but we're gonna speak on it don't even worry about that right there say hey sugar and chat Tyler Texas back up in this thing on hump day that's what I'm talking about come on in Nebraska is up in the building New Jersey in the building said the seven two um the seven three two pimping what's happening you see the what 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 you say, I miss all my lovelies. That's what's up. Thank you for being around here. Cincinnati is up in the house. Wacky Wednesday hump day. DFW is on the check-in. Willie say, can't chat to everyone. Um, Damn it, you can't chat, but everyone. Thumbs up and all that fly stuff right there. Um, you say, say checking on it, Willie. Um to make sure they ain't ganking you. <laughs> Listen, thank y'all for being around here. Like I constantly be trying to tell people, even if y'all is not getting notifications, please come around and check on your peoples. Please come check on your peoples. We already know the times. I, I, damn it, I may have to make me a little banner. I may have to make a little banner or some as a reminder because um, a lot of us, we as visual people, we as not audio people, we visual. So a lot of times we need to see like banners and stuff like that so it can remind us because we can have that picture in our brain of the start time out here in these street monday through friday at 12 o'clock we on youtube the willie williams show live and we on twitch.tv.com the willie williams show at 12 o'clock that's what's up he said well i seen a body cam that you really need to cover please send it to me um please 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 send it to me that's what's up. Give yourself a pat on the back of y'all that made over 100 by 08. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Look, look, look at all the love. Look at all the consistency. Ain't that what they say? Um, we need consistency 
to grow. This is what they be trying to. This was smart, smart people be out here saying the three three four gun monkey town is up in the building. What to do? What to do? Los Angeles is up in the house. The four seven Orlando, Florida is checking on this. Hey Willie, why ain't that in? What to do? What to do? Damn it, I ain't seen in a good little minute. The two eight one H town is up in the building. They say here twenty twenty nine minutes of that five. That's what I'm talking about. I'm sure nothing to try to go it on get to you. Bam 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 bam. Miami is up in this thing. That's what I'm talking about. The four seven. Is in the house. You say it's 70 degrees around there. Damn it. I think it's like a 64 round hill um, in Florida. Damn it. I'm surprised that they ain't closed the schools yet. Surprised, surprised they ain't closed the school yet. We ain't with that cold stuff. You say now, Willie, they playing with us. It's, you say your Netflix went from $14.99 to $25.99 without any notice of the increase. Say it ain't so. I'm trying to tell you. Listen. I can almost believe before the end of the year, Netflix is going to cost about 30, 31 dollars, 30, 31, 32 ish dollars out here in the dog on street. Now, why? Why is they trying to increase like a cable company? What's wrong with these people? They say, um, bam, 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 the 225 is up in here for the live. I appreciate that right there. Chicago is in the house of 773 is up in this thing. Say Seattle is checking on in at 9 a.m. Good morning, Uncle Willie. Good morning to, to my peoples out there on the West Coast. I keep forgetting that y'all are three hours behind. That's what's up. So y'all do be catching the play up in the morning, like when y'all on y'all way to work and all that fly stuff right there. Whew, I am so glad that I can help all of you all, or at least the majority of you good people, make it through y'all shift out here in these streets because working, <laughs> working is boring like when you can't be entertained. You know what I'm saying? Like it really, really boring. They say, well, I have Netflix and I have basic for six ninety nine, dollars but they have a standard plan for $15 a month. Where that's at? Where in the hell is it $15 a month? I think that I started, I think, I think Netflix started, what, at $9.99 or $11.99? It was something like that right there. Mm-hmm. It was something like that right there. But I don't think it's $15 no more. If it, it, oh, it may be by state. It may be by state. I don't need much no. I don't need much no. Y'all, we got some good news. We can start off with some good news. Mm-hmm. We have a, um, let me, let me, let me, let me. We got some good news put up on the screen down here in Florida. Remember, that's my state. Um, in Miami Gardens, we had a missing girl. We had a missing girl. I was supposed to, I was supposed to have spoke on her yesterday, but for some reason it slipped my mind. You know what I'm saying? We had a, a missing autistic 11 year old girl. In Miami Gardens, and now that girl is found. That's what I'm talking about. Here we go. The search for an 11 year old girl from Miami Gardens is now over tonight. That's right. She was found safe miles away in Hollywood. A good Samaritan saw her picture on the news and recognized her at a Walgreens store. CBS right. News Miami's Anna McAllister spoke with her family. A parent's nightmare turns into relief after their 11-year-old daughter with autism is found safe after being missing for hours. But the question is, how did this little girl end up miles away from home at this Walgreens in Hollywood? Well, police believe she hopped on a bus and made her way up all the way through 95. Wow. A worried mother brought to tears of joy. After her 11-year-old... Shout out to that mama with the purple head. Oh, go ahead. Daughter, Galea Duncan, was found safe in Hollywood after disappearing hours before from her Miami Gardens home. I'm relieved. I'm happy. I'm happy that she's found. Happy that she's going to be able to come home, have a meal, and sleep in a warm bed. According to police, Galea, who has autism, was reported missing shortly before noon on Tuesday. Oh, I know right where they. I know. I know the house. Oh, wow. I know that house. That's right on the lake where all of them, uh, damn it, that's on the street. Um, damn it, is that 22nd? I think that's 22nd and something, something. Um, but they be having a lot of iguanas. They be having a lot of iguanas. Her right parents now. say she left their home on the 2400 block of Northwest 155th Street in Miami Gardens without their knowledge. After getting into an argument about what she was going to wear to school, uh, we just told that she could not wear them, and it became a very much high rate tackle with her. And um, she didn't want to go to school, so she got home, and we did what parents do: you have to go to your room, no electronics, and 
we turned our back and she was gone. Police scoured the area searching for clues about where Galea was all afternoon. Hen yes, yes, yes. Um, you say being autistic doesn't mean unaware. You write about that right there. You say, well, that side chick house. I know that house. <laughs> Boy, I, I know the house, though. I'm, I'm trying to tell you something. Um, she said that she had wanted to wear these shoes, but you can't wear these type of shoes to school. And it, listen, a lot of people, they they may not have dealt with autistic children and autistic, autistic people. A lot of y'all really don't understand it until you really have a chance to deal with these types of um, people to really understand when they want some, like they want some, and and then you got to stand firm, you know? So and, um, she didn't want to go to school, so she got home, and we did what parents do. You have to go to your room, no Good electronics, job. and we turned our back, and she was gone. Police scoured the area searching for clues about where Galea was all afternoon handing out this flyer to neighbors. The Duncansons panicked all day long, worrying about what happened to their daughter. Did she just disappear? Did she fall in the lake across over there? So it was she's very really scary for me. Police received a tip that Galea hopped on a bus earlier in the day, and before 6 p.m., officers contacted the Duncansons, telling them their daughter was found safe at a Walgreens on Young Circle in Hollywood. Someone seen the Amber Alert, and they called it in. They actually stopped and asked if this is her, and she said yes, and she just followed them. The Duncansons overwhelmed with joy as they were reunited with their daughter, and eternally grateful for police and the community who worked tirelessly to find her. Thank you guys, and all the tips that came through that made this possible, they appreciate all the concern and uh, I'm guessing that that's the daddy consideration you guys put into my family. It's okay. still unclear how Galea ended up on that bus and how she got here to this Walgreens in Hollywood. But the thing that matters is that she is safe and she's home with her family. Right. For now, reporting from Hollywood, Anna McAllister, CBS News, Miami. That's what's up. That's what's up. See, see, now listen, snitching and telling is not a bad thing. Snitching and telling not a bad thing. You know, some say some, especially when it comes down to the churn, but it's, we can say that there a lot, especially when it comes down to the children. But the sad part is the children be getting in a whole bunch of mess. The children be getting killed by other children, and we still won't tell on those children who are doing the killing. So we can say it, but it's not registering with the community when it comes down to the violence that the kids is doing. But at least, at least somebody saw this baby and say, you is the missing child. That's the whole point. Good job, good job, good job. Move right along, move right along. I ain't gonna eat my whole yeah. We gotta go to, um, we finna go to Chicago real, real quick. We going to the shot. This is where we gonna be. We going to the shot. Hold on. You're talking too much, little pimpin'. Um, I got a question for y'all. <laughs> They had this thing called the Innocence Projects. Um, in case y'all don't know, the Innocence Project is not um, led by Darky Hufo. It is. Um, it was created, if I'm not mistaken, by by our Jewish brothers and sisters. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. And there is another organization who is doing like the same thing. They is um, working cases um, for for people who have may have been falsely incarcerated and or wrongly incarcerated um if i'm not mistaken this is also what kim kardashian be out here doing be trying to get players out of well people out of jail who is wrongly incarcerated i think that these type of programs is great programs and the crazy part is these programs um if i'm not mistaken they do it for free they do it for free <laughs> Say that again. They do it for free. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong about that right now. But look here. The reason that I'm pointing this out because we do understand that there is a lot of dark and hue players out here on the planet who has been wrongly incarcerated. Or should I say it different? A little amount of us believe that a lot of people who is incarcerated is wrongly incarcerated. There's a large majority of people who believe if you in jail, you did it. The large of them, a mass amount of people believe that. 
if you is, if you done got, um, um, damn it, if you got some time, if we found you guilty and all that stuff, that you was actually guilty. And that's wrong. Yes, it is called pro bono. They do it pro bono for free. That's what's up. And or some people will do um, cases like, um, I don't get paid unless you get paid. You know what I'm saying? There, there, there is a lot. Of, well, there, there's a lot of good lawyers will only take the case if they know that they can win. And they don't mind not getting paid up front because they know that they're going to win. You know what I'm saying? And the, the, damn it, those is some of the best doggone lawyers because they have to work for their money. They really do have to work for their money. The ones that you pay up front, mm, eh, whether they win or lose, they still get paid. You know what I'm saying? Um, but here we go. The reason I pointed it out like this before I even get started is for the simple fact. Darker you folks know, or we at least say that there's more black people who go to jail than other races of people, right? Other hues and all that stuff. Why we have not created things like the Innocence Project? Why have us not created things like the Innocent Project? Because a lot of the people in Innocent Projects is, is lawyers, is attorneys, is paralegals. You know what I'm saying? People who is in the field. Why haven't a lot of our, let's say, retired attorneys and lawyers and paralegals created a group and, you know, try to do some pro, pro bono cases to help people who is wrongly incarcerated? Why isn't it not led by black folk? We got so many problems and or we say that white supremacy is an issue. You know what I'm saying? But we don't do anything. Well, we do some things, but we don't do something as simple as try to get our brothers and sisters off the resort and bring them right back to the crib. We won't even set that down. Something wrong with us. We always look for other people to do something for us. We always look for other people to save us. You know, we got like that Jesus complex. Oh, I think that's where religion had them really messed up, dog. Dog, dog, you folk. Not all, not all, not all. But just in my mind, I think religion has damaged dog, you folk. Because once you put in somebody's mind that somebody's coming to save you, that's a problem. Moving right along. Here we go. Wrongfully, um, wrongfully convicted Chicago brothers. Brothers was convicted. Mm-hmm. Um, denied certification of innocent despite being exonerated. Here we go. Others quoting Martin Luther King Jr. saying their justice delayed is justice denied and vowing with their families standing behind them to prove their innocence in court. The reality is, is that you got two African-American men here who are fighting for their lives and have been from 17 and 18 in the city of Chicago. A crushing day in court as two brothers who say they were tortured into confessions nearly 30 years ago by corrupt cops trained under Commander John Burge must wait even longer for a chance to be certified as innocent. I want to move and not be watched, move and not be judged. That's what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what's supposed to happen for someone who's innocent. That's how an innocent person moves. Sean Tyler and Reginald Henderson were freed several years ago, exonerated of their murder conviction. Today, after years of waiting, a judge denied them a certificate of innocence, forcing the brothers to prove their actual innocence for a murder that occurred in the 90s. We know from the evidence that They want them to prove their actual innocence, although they have been exonerated from the crime. Exoneration means you did not do it. We have evidence that you didn't do. We have evidence that there was corruption and yada, yada, yada. So you didn't do it. But presented that they don't have the goods. And that's why it's so frustrating because then it feels just like an effort to delay and it's 
It's senseless and cruel. A certificate of innocence would expunge the murder conviction, allowing the brothers to no longer be labeled felons. It's easier to get a job. You can own a firearm. Any number of things you can do. The other thing is it unlocks the doors to monetary recovery. So a certificate of innocence would then entitle them to seek relief from the state for wrongful imprisonment. Oh, so I did not know that. So the only way to seek release relief from the state is you have to have a certificate of innocence. I didn't know. Y'all see how we learning together? Look at it. ABC 7 legal expert Gil Sofer says the state isn't obligated to oppose certificates of innocence. And yet at the same time, the state can say, but it doesn't mean they were actually innocent of the crime. That contradiction confounding to the two men who spent decades detained for a crime they say they didn't commit. If you exonerated us, then what else is left? We have every right to stand here before you and ask for our lives back. That's right. Respectfully. That's right. Respectfully. That's right. Now, the brothers' new court dates are April 20th for a status hearing, May 4th and 5th for hearings with witnesses. We reached out to the Cook County State's Attorney's Office for an explanation on why prosecutors are opposed to a certificate of innocence, but have not yet heard back. Watch. Now, um, dog, I saw other videos to where they actually, now they finally got the certificate of innocence, but I can't show it here. I can't show it on YouTube. I will have to wait until we get over to Rumble to show y'all that right there. Um, uh, bam, 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 bam. Let's let's just make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I got it, but I don't want to show it here because then I will have to um remove it from the show and I shouldn't have to go through all that right there. So maybe I will be able to show it when we get over to Rumble. Hey, listen, the judge want them to prove that they didn't do it after being exonerated see you can be exonerated but it don't mean that you didn't do it you can get exonerated because of remember they pointed out the um dog it under the police what was buddy name right here under the police um sheriff or chief were tortured into confessions nearly 30 yeah. years ago by torture tortured into confessions a lot of people was beaten and tortured and beaten into confessions and they is in jail right now going through the same thing that they had done went through but they blame him well under his leadership into confessions nearly 30 years ago by corrupt cops trained under commander john burge must wait. train under john burge yeah so now they could have done it but because they was beaten into a confession that makes them innocent. That makes them innocent. So a judge is not saying, well, hell, prove that you didn't do it. What the hell you mean to prove that I didn't do it? And and you would need this um, this certification of innocence, man, so you can get that felony off your back. Do y'all understand how hard it is to come up with a felony? To come up out here in these streets, and this was since the 90s. We talking about 30 years ago. Oh, Jesus, they done lost their whole lives. They done lost their whole doggone lives, and now you don't want to give them a certificate of innocence? Just remember who the judge, who, damn it, who, whoever the judge was, and what these dudes need to do, what these brothers need to do. This is an election season. See, these are the times where we need to be voting people out of office. We need to gather... Shh, they can go on a campaign. Now listen to me. These brothers can go on a campaign in the darker hue community. Everybody in the city um, should, should know their story. Especially the women in Chicago or Illinois should know the story. Typically, typically women vote more than men. So the women need to be pushing other women and the men who is up, um, who they laying down with. We got to get up and go ahead on and vote this judge out. We need to vote the judge out. I think they need to start making signs and, you know, pamphlets and stuff, passing around the community. This is the judge who would not give these brothers who was wrongly convicted a certification of innocence. They need to get him removed. But guess what they won't do? <laughs> that what I just had done said. 
This is what we won't do as a people. Because it still come down to Cook County has over a lot of us do not believe that voting works. That's a problem. We have another we have another Chicago man who was convicted of murder who was trying to clear his name, who is now attending school. Here we go. Turn more than 200 convictions. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Back that up to the beginning. Here we go. Cook County has overturned more than 200 convictions since state's attorney Kim Fox took office in 2016. Restoring justice is said to be a top priority for the office's recently rebranded wrongful conviction division, now called the Conviction Review Unit. A Chicago man trying to clear his name is counting on them being successful. They, they, they had to create a conviction review unit. Shout out to Kim Fox because this fell under Kim Fox's um, tenure out here in the street. And as we all know, Kim, Kim is stepping down this year. You know what I'm saying? And finna let somebody else get um, to take her job. But damn it, this happened under her watch. So shout out to that sister. Go ahead. I continue to live that day. That day was August 27th, 1993. Someone Dang. shot David Staples in Hyde Park. And he says as he was still lying on the ground, he was framed for murder by a Chicago police officer. In his narrative, I was shot because of an incident that had occurred there two days prior, where somebody was actually unfortunately killed. And he said I was shot in retaliation from that. He created that narrative and he built a story around that and sent me to prison for 29 years. 29 years. 29 for some shit you didn't do. It was, it was, it was really rough. At the same time, I had a young family that was actually going through uh, 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 tremendous struggles. After nearly three decades behind bars, Staples was released from the East Moline Correctional Center in 2022. The Illinois Innocence Project took on his case nine years ago and is still working to clear his name. Still trying to clear his name. Nine years. The, these is the beautiful Lida Hughes sisters from the Innocence Project. This is one of those rare cases mm. where we know what really happened that day and we know who was really involved and it wasn't David Staples. We have a motive, we have like the whole thing laid out, including DNA evidence from the gun found at the scene that is not David's DNA on the gun. A petition to vacate his conviction is pending in Cook County. Michelle Mecchiani is leading the newly rebranded Conviction Review Unit. I feel like when we have a Conviction Review Unit, that title allows us to really take ownership in a way without having to feel that we are the ones that cause this harm, but realizing the system as a whole is causing harm to so many people. We should all be able to agree that we don't want innocent people in prison. According to this report by the National Registry of Exonerations, somewhere between 2 and 10 percent of defendants are wrongly convicted, meaning the number of innocent people behind bars is anywhere from 46,000 to 230,000 up to 7,000 in Illinois alone. When you wrongfully convict someone, the real perpetrator gets away with it. Data shows for the fifth year in a row, Chicago is the wrongful conviction capital of the U.S. The process in Cook County has been really frustrating because it's not collaborative. But, she says, there has clearly been a shift in the way that wrongful convictions are addressed and spoken about in the current administration in the state attorney's office. Everybody should be concerned about wrongful convictions. The sad part is we may be sitting back saying, oh, this right here would never be me because I don't live there or I am not in those type of communities and or towns. Well, um, I'm here to tell you all across this country, people have been wrongfully convicted and is in prison. Yup, it's not just that state or that city. It's all across the country. It's not an adversarial proceeding. With this unit, especially now, is we want to collaborate in the interest of justice and we want to ensure that all stakeholders can participate in that process. If y'all just coming on in here, we're also streaming live on Twitch, twitch.tv.com, The Willow Williams Show. We need some more thumbs ups. I need some more support. I need some more support. What do my thumbs up look like? Let me take a breather. Let me, let me, let me, because I don't feel loved. I don't feel loved. <laughs> let me refresh. I'm not feeling loved. Uh, I'm feeling some type of way. I need attention. <laughs> I need attention like them babies do. Uh-uh. Nope. Nope. Let me see what these numbers look like. Hold on. Wait. Uh-uh. Nope. 
Nope, 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 nope. Wait a minute. I see 179 thumbs up. Is over 230 some people here. Can we have over 200 thumbs up? I need your support. What's the point? Come on now. I come to work to work. I need your support. Listen, the thumbs ups and the share button is free. The thumbs up and the share button is free. We also have Super Chat Cash App and the damn it, what it is, the PayPal link. I need your support around here. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Hold on, let me um say screaming, screaming, screaming. <laughs> I'm gonna say this a little later. I need my numbers up. Here we go. Um, biggest hope that I can actually prevent somebody from going through what I've actually gone through. Staples was part of the inaugural Augustana prison education program. After being released, he enrolled as a full-time student on campus and will graduate in May. Okay. He tells the I-team he wants to be a therapist, but is hitting roadblocks getting accepted to a master's program because of his conviction. Can't even get a master's program due to having a felony. You would think I would have acceptance letters, but people are hesitant with this hanging over my head. You have this beautiful soul who's been through so much, and now like his dream in life is to give back and help people reacclimate to society. And do y'all also understand the educational facilities inside of the city? I'm pretty sure that they, they they know of his story. And they won't be like, well, damn, he was exonerated. Why can't we let him in, into the master's program? This is crazy. Shout out to Fee Fee for the four dollar cash shop. Say get them likes up for Pastor Laugh Out Loud. I'm trying, I'm trying. There y'all. I I need your help around here. It, it, it ain't gonna hurt you. Is being thwarted because of this murder conviction that could easily be vacated. Staples' case is back in court tomorrow. His message to the state's attorney: I didn't commit the crime. Evidence shows it. Look at the case and get it right. What? So he got a message to the state. That to the state attorney, but he took a picture with the state attorney, which is Kim Fox. Tomorrow, his... I don't understand. So, 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 so is they telling us that um, the state attorney can't say, well, hello um, to the judges that y'all need to take this stuff off of his record? Can the state attorney tell the judges to give people the certificate of innocence? and to take this stuff off of their records. Is that a job that the state attorney can do? Can somebody educate me on that right there? Shout out to I Make 60 Look Good, Shirley, for the $20 cash app. You say, well, I forgot to hit the like button. Spank me. That's what's up. I'm glad to see that you're around here. I hope that you're doing well out here in these streets. You're still getting prayers. You're still getting them prayers. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. He said they are not going to examine him. And that's a doggone shame because he has been out for nine years. Message to the state's attorney. I didn't commit the crime. Evidence shows it. Look at the case. Oh, so now the evidence show he didn't commit the crime. Come on, I, I can't okay, right. listen. One of the requirements for the Illinois Innocence Project to take on a case is that the person has to have at least eight years remaining on their sentence because they say it takes an average of eight years to exonerate someone. Watch. Wait, what? What did they say about the Innocence Project? One of the requirements for the Illinois Innocence Project... Oh, the Illinois Innocence Project. Oh, okay. ...take on a case is that the person has to have at least eight years remaining on their sentence. Have to have at least eight years. So if you got four years, like, they're not going to take your um, uh, um case. No. Nah. Because they say it takes an average of eight years to exonerate someone. Damn, an average of eight, eight long years to go through your files and see what the problem is and um, um, file all these documents and stuff to get you in front of judges and get your court dates and shit like that. An average of eight years. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. Somehow, somewhere we need to create newer courts or something like that, like something new so we can get the, um, the ball rolling Maybe some celebrities they may come up with this right here. We need to fast track court. We need a fast track court. 
We need a fast track court and the courts only for, um, let's say, falsely accused or wrongfully convicted persons. We need to have a court just for that right there. Come on now. We can do that, right? Huh? The state fund, everything else. Because I know people are going to say, well, Willie, we don't have the funding for that. Well, we had the funding to take care of migrants just out the damn blue. Right, all right, all right. Find the money. <laughs> Call that right there. Find the money. Y'all play too much. Let's go on around here to, um, hell, we still in Chicago. What was this right here? Wait, 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 wait. I thought I just had. I had them lined up. Now they want to act stupid. Hold up. Bam. Nope. Bam. Bam. I just had them lined it up. Back it up just a tad bit. All right. We're not going to get discouraged. Not going to get discouraged. I got that. I got that. Got that. Something wrong. Something wrong because now I can't find what I need to go ahead on and find. This is just stupid. Hold on. Wait. Oh, 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 we're doing that right there when we get over there to Rumble. That's what's up. Oh, listen. And we're also going to Rumble. We is going to Rumble at 1 o'clock. That's where we're going to. That is where we're going to. I'm trying to stay around here and, um, God, dog it. Since I wrote it down, uh, what is this? Do, 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 do. Need some more thumbs ups. I need some more support. Help a player out. Um, hold up. Is that a car? Resident. How you spell residence? Residence in a. I thought that that was. I thought that was my car, but it ain't my car. I think this one right here. It's a two thirty eight. Got it. Let's put that down up. At three. We still in Chicago. We still in Chicago. Make that that big. Put that on up on the screen. In West, in West Chicago, West Side Chicago, residents, they rally after two deadly mass shootings out here. Here we go. It was a deadly Easter weekend in the city of Chicago. At least four people killed and nearly two dozen hurt in shootings, including two mass shootings in the Austin neighborhood alone. New tonight at 10, community and police leaders say this is unacceptable and they're rallying for peace. Our Jermont Terry spoke to them and joins us now live in the control room. Jermont. Erica, the community came together because many say they cannot allow these two mass shootings to be accepted and considered the norm. Yes, they did rally for peace, but they also hit the streets with Chicago police looking for clues for the victims and their families. But today, God, we come with a, with a, with a heavy heart. As right. prayers echo in Austin, this crowd stands in the same spot where four were shot and Ariana Murphy killed in one of two mass shootings on Easter Sunday. Mm. We feel the kids. The kids are not in touch. There's a disconnect between the adults and the kids. You see something, say something. Mm. 37th Ward. We have to keep telling adults that. That is a sad part. We have to keep telling people over 30, over 40, over 50, if you see something, say something. What's wrong? Older woman Emma Mitz organized this rally because, as she puts it, she and others are fed up and worried this past weekend's mass shootings may be the prelude of this summer. I'm afraid, and I don't want that to be uh, what I see this summer, but in my guts, I feel that's what's going to happen this summer. Yeah, because every summer, the same thing happens. Sunday morning, Chicago police say someone opened fire as a crowd gathered inside Poppy's chat room on Madison. Murphy died on scene. Mm. Yet three others, all women, including the 16-year-old, were rushed to the ER with gunshot wounds. Hours later, all women then got hit. It are just blocks mm. away, four more were shot on Laverne. While this group stood on the sidewalk in the middle of the afternoon, a 16-year-old boy died. Uh, they always say hurt people hurt people, and that's what we're dealing with. Pastor George Batty among the dozens who not only rallied for peace. If that's what we're dealing with, then why is it so many dark and hue people hurt? Why is it so many people, how, so many people find their way with firearms and they have been hurt? If we have so many hurt people inside the community, then it has to be a parenting problem. But until we point out what, where the problem is, 
until we point out these these types of parents who is causing the problem, we ain't never gonna fix it. But also walk the same streets with Chicago police. They hope to drum up tips in these two investigations. Because every time it happens to one person, they want their lick back. Mm -hmm. So it, it's continuing, continuous. So it's just like, okay, we just put a Band-Aid over this wound, now something else happened, now it's bleeding again. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're out here to bring everybody together. This is part of the reason why we're out here doing this mobilization, to allow the community to understand and, and restore that faith in us, that they can come forward. Now, police sources tell me that Chicago police are questioning and detained three young men in connection to the mass shooting on Laverne. As for the mass shooting outside Poppy's chat room, very few clues and tips are coming in. Live very few clues and tips, y'all. <laughs> the streets know everything, but the streets don't know nothing. That's what's up. That is what's up. We don't care about one another. And, it, and it's so crazy. We're supposed to be so doggone smart. Remember that. We're supposed to be really, really smart and intelligent and all that fly stuff right there. We tend to forget you can you can tell, you can snitch anonymously. That has to say that says a lot about a people when you can do some shit and hide your hand and you won't throw the brick. Something really, really wrong with you people. I promise you. Um, we got a heartbreaking family of the 19-year-old girl who was killed in the quadruple Chicago shooting. You know, the one that we just got finished talking about, about if you know something, say something. Well, the family gonna speak. Here we go. Brianna Murphy's family says she was set to start nursing school this summer after graduating at the top of her class. That future was taken from her Easter Sunday, and she was out enjoying a night with her friends. And I tell her I love at the end of a conversation, and she tell me I love you more, daddy. She had a whole, da she got a daddy. This beautiful baby right here has a daddy. I love you more, daddy. That's, I'm going to miss hearing those words. We do understand that Easter was just Sunday. We don't see no tears, pimp. We point that there out around here at the Willie Williams Show. Brianna Murphy's family speaking for the first time since she was killed Easter Sunday in a South Austin shooting. Just an innocent bystander, wrong place, wrong time, and it took my baby from us. We so heartbroken, we don't even know. We can't, we still don't understand what's going on. So that's her auntie. Still, no tears. From the adults, no tears. I do understand that people grieve differently, but we got no tears, and that's something that we make sure we point out on this show right here. Teen year old hairstylist was getting ready to embark on a new career to become a nurse. Her family remembering her vibrant energy and her signature smile. She was always laughing and smiling every chance she gets. Ariane was a very outgoing person, very smart, loving person. Her family says she was out with friends in the South Austin neighborhood along West Madison when police say someone shot towards the group. Ariana was shot in the head and died on the scene. The four others injured. And it's so sad. It's sad. It's a tragic thing that she had to leave the way she did. Today, 37th Ward Alderwoman Emma Mitz, together with Chicago police, community, and faith leaders, gathering where Ariana died to bring the neighborhood together and call for peace in light of the recent weekend violence and to find solutions to prevent any more tragic losses. It could have been one of us. It could have been one of our family members. And we would need the same support. We can't do it alone. So when we have everyone here working together, it, it comes. hopefully we come with a solution. Chicago police say they are still investigating Ariana's murder, and so far no one is in custody. CPD and her family asking if anyone has any information to please contact investigators. Y'all, please, please contact investigators. They interviewed four family members, four family members who know her, who knew her, not a tear in sight. And like I always say, I do understand that we grieve different, but Sunday was just Sunday. Today is Wednesday. I'm not understand Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, today. This interview happened yesterday. 10 hours ago is when they posted it. So this was yesterday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Mitch in two days. We interview four people. No tears. Strange, strange, strange. Move right along. I ain't gonna eat much hold you. Mm-hmm. 
And for all you people who be up under the belief that people love you and care about you and they can't live without you, they gonna miss you and all that shit. Mitch ain't even crying. Mitch ain't even trapped it in I know, I know like the argument, but Willie, they was probably crying at the house and at the time that the news came around, that was like in between they crying and stuff like that right there. You know, they don't want to feel sad. They want to, you know, all of those excuses that people would give of why you not crying. That's crazy to me. Just in my mind, just in my mind. Let me scratch this right here. Ah, how much time we got? Got dog, we 49 in. We 49 in. We looking good right now. How many minutes can we get like one of them? We can do a... Oh, all right. Bam. We can do this right here before we run out of time. Um, and listen, listen, we is going over to Rumble, Rumble.com, the Willie Williams show at one o'clock in case you all was wondering. Should I do? I can do this one right here. I can do this one right here. Um, got to be more careful. We got a viral video. That, that we call it a viral video out here in these screen. Let me go and put it up on the screen for you real quick. We is in the Walgreens. We is in the Walgreens. We finna go on and talk about Walgreens and security. Walgreens and security. Shout out to Profit Made for the for the, for the three dollar cash app. Say some support for passers. Say check to see if it's a GoFundMe. Got to be more careful. I'm so glad that you said that right there. Now I don't forgot little mama name. I don't took her all off the screen and everything. Oh my God, what was her name? Um, it was. Wait, wait. What was the title of the doggone thing that I just did then? What was the title? I mean, I just had it. That was a different, that's a different page. That's why I couldn't find it. Oh, I broke a um, try, let's see. Hard, um, broken, hard, broken family. I got to type it back in and see if we can get to the story. 19 year old, say Chicago, Chicago, mass shooting, mass, got that, do that. A picture will pop up, something like that. Man shooting, tinky, tinky, paw. Not that. Shooting, kill, 19, yo. If I can just get her name back. Ariana Murphy. I think I got it. Ariana Murphy. Hold on. I'm glad that you said something now. Yeah, l listen, listen. You all have to be reminding me when I'm doing the story because I will show enough forget. I promise you. Hold on. Oh. Ari. No, these is ones that is created by Ariana Murphy. So no, 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 no. Nope. They might have had insurance. They might have insurance though. But she do not have a GoFundMe. That's what's up. Shout out to the fam for having insurance if the fam got insurance. That's what I'm talking about. Bam. Okay. Let's go ahead on and jump into this right here real, real quick. Um, let's go to a Walgreens, to a Walgreens to where it's sad that a Walgreens have to have armed security because y'all know the streets got to eat. Shout out to Douglas for being a member for one month. Appreciate that right there. Say showing support. Say blessed and happy to be here. Keep up the good work, Willie. Thanks for all the news that the news don't give us. That's what I'm talking about. And this is why I be having to come to work. Here we go, y'all. Let's see what's transpiring. This guy thinks yeah, I'm stealing. Got items on you, and I need those he, items back. I had guns on him. He had mace. He was calling me a thief and antagonizing me. It was terrifying. I'm just gonna look to that beautiful you, bag. You open it up yourself. I, I'm not clarifying anything for you. Did you steal anything? No. Look at that beautiful baby. She don't look like a thief. I don't even think I looked around. This is Mika Prince, the woman who pressed record last Wednesday inside the Walgreens downtown on Pike. Uh, he was approaching me, getting extremely close to me, uncomfortably close. Said he was going to put me in handcuffs. Prince says, I think he wanted to put you in handcuffs and do something different to you, baby. Shout out to Anna Z for the $5 cash app. I appreciate that right there. This security guard, identified as Brian Vinegar, confronted and then cornered her just before 6 o'clock. Call them, please. I'm giving you every option. Here, here I'll sit there. down while you call them. An official police report shows it was indeed Mika who called 911. She called the police herself. 
adamant with authorities she didn't put anything in her pockets. She was just there to get her medication. Mika was rolling as SPD interviewed her and in the process captured a blatant lie on camera. He said that he was going to put me in cuffs and take me down to the ground. I don't know who this man is. Stop walking away. Or what? You're going to get the tank. You're going to go to the ground. And you're going to get sued. Mika kept good on that promise, hiring attorney James Prescott. We got to do something about these guts, though. We got to do something about their little gut. Hold on. Mika player. Kept good on that promise. Right there. Um, fella, player. All this shit. Up there. Damn it. I thought that this was a part of the bulletproof vest. You were too slim to have that big ass stomach. We got to tighten up out here, y'all. For real. Hiring attorney James Prescott. They're now taking legal action against Walgreens. This is just bullying, plain and simple. It's also assault. And when we have large men basically playing cosplay military, intimidating young women, we've gone too far. Well, we have large men intimidate. So our size, a man's size is intimidating to women now. I thought that they was all strong and stuff like that right there. In cosplay military, intimidating young women. Intimidating young women. <laughs> if he's a large man, shouldn't he be able to intimidate all women? Right. Whether they're young and or old because he's talking about a large man. This is a large human. So a large human should be intimidating to not just um 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 one a young woman or a young girl. It should be to all of them, right? We've we gone play too, too much. Okay, let's pause this for a second. Because it's crazy. Watch this. I'm gonna tell you something. Go inside of the community and look at the young, the young women who have assaulted and then jumped on very large men. Look at the young women who have um, assaulted and or killed very large men. Yeah. And, and break down what's on him. I see two magazines, a pistol, there's a taser. He's got cuffs as well, and not one, but two body cameras. That's what's up. That's what's up. He got all the tools he need. Is all that really necessary for working inside a Walgreens? Yes. He's got a much more tactical appearance than he probably needs working in retail. So you're saying it's a bit much for a Walgreens? I would say yes. What's that? As many Walgreens across the, across the country that has been robbed and all that fly stuff, you need some type of deterrent. If we think that this is too much, then the police need to stop wearing this type of um, um, these these tools. The police need to stop it. Because when SWAT jump out on your ass, they got all that right there. Hmm? And a lot of people will say, oh, that looks so intimidating. It is done for a reason. So stop telling top flight security that they should not have it and they should not be able to deter people by having it. I think I said it right. Go ahead. Looking for an unbiased reaction to this viral video, we turn to Max Anderson, who unbiased. spent the past two decades working in private security. Um, looking at his uniform, you know, he's wearing a tactical vest. Um, I've worn those at times when I've worked in, uh, like, disaster response. Max says what he witnessed was the opposite of de-escalation. He thinks guards like Vinegar give his profession a bad name. It's bad for the industry as whole. Well. Um, because it portrays the private security industry as like, you know, these aggressive, over the top, wannabe cops that um, are abusing their power. Here's what you need to do. I literally Here's came in here for my prescription. Here are your choices. And you guys are, Here are your choices. accusing Here are your me of choices. stealing. We've reached out to Walgreens with several questions, but all they give us in response via email is a single sentence, acknowledging the incident and confirming they are investigating. I also contacted the security firm Vinegar was allegedly working under, and we're still waiting to hear back from them. Reporting in the studio, Lori Don. That's what's up. That baby don't look like she stole none, huh? She out here stealing players hard. So that's probably what that baby doing. For real, for real. But listen, listen, listen. Some things happen to some people who it don't deserve to happen to. But this is just life. That's really all it is. Y'all give yourself the pat on the back if y'all made it to the end of the Midday News out here on this wonderful hump day. This beautiful Wednesday. I think it's beautiful outside. I'm just thinking... Just saying something. I don't know how it look outside right now. You know, it could be horrible in in, in a lot of y'all's community. But enjoy your day. Nevertheless, you is still alive out here in the doggone street. And that's where you need to be. Let me grab that right there. Bam.
players, prostate cancer awareness around here at the Willie Williams Show. Say it's just a finger. Say your prostate don't work, your meat don't work. Mess around and lose your little la la and or your life. It's your choice. You make the call. Your body, your booty. I am here to help. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm ill. And y'all don't judge me about my screen in the back. I still ain't fixed it. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to fix it tomorrow. <laughs> But thank y'all for being around here. I really do appreciate y'all for real, for real. Shout out to Prophet May for the two dollar cash shot. He said, "F that, what med? What med did she pick up? STD Friday cream? Ooh, yes, yeah, she was picking up her medication." Shout out to all the beautiful young girls who was on medicine, who was on prescription medication. Shout out to everybody who also went over there to Twitch.tv.com. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Listen, Rumble starts at one o'clock. I'm out of here. I'm gone.